Hi, welcome to Chris Cook for You Too. Today we're going to be doing a double recipe uh, in one segment. We're going to do country style spare ribs and we're going to do scalloped potatoes. I'm going to start out by just putting the onions for the scalloped potatoes in this skillet and allowing them to saute. So I'm going to walk you over to the stove. Here I have about two and a half tablespoons to three tablespoons of oil and I'm just going to add to that some onions that I have uh, chopped up, rough chopped up and then I split them so that they can start to saute. And while that's doing the sauteing, turn my oven up, my stove up on medium and allow that to saute for a little while. While that's sauteing, I'm going to walk you back over and then do the country style ribs. Now I have, if you can look at the country style ribs, they're different than your regular barbecuing ribs and I've already removed some of the fat from the country ribs, okay? And I had these two that were left over. I did leave the fat on one because the fat also acts as a tenderizer, so that's going to help to tenderize as they cook in the pot. First, I'm going to start by pan frying them on the top of the stove just to change the color to the roasted color, and then I'm going to put them in the oven and allow them to do the rest of the cooking. Now, the spices that we're going to be using to season our meat today is going to be smoked pepper we have some seasoning salt. This is more than seasoning salt. We have some roasted onion and chives and we have a mixture of black pepper, white pepper and uh, bell pepper. A little bit of bell pepper. All this is dried and a little bit of crushed red pepper. Of course we have our salt. We have our cracked black pepper and we have some garlic powder. Now I'm just going to start by seasoning one side of the meat and then I'm going to season the others. If you've never had this roasted in the oven, this is a real good meat. As you can see, it's a lot of meat. It's a chunk and you probably can get two servings out of just one piece of meat because the meat is so thick and you're going to cook this for like an hour and a half on your stove or at least until it's, it's tender and then it pulls apart with a fork and I'll show you that in the finished product. So we're going to go ahead and season up this one side. Okay, put some garlic powder. And when you're cooking meats, uh, for me, if you're not going to be marinating, it's better to use the powder than to go ahead and use the whole cloves of garlic or crushed garlic, not unless you're going to take the garlic and put it into the pan that you're going to be cooking with. Then, of course, we're going to add some crushed black pepper. And then we're going to turn the meat and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now because this meat is so thick, as you can see how thick it is, that's why it requires so much cooking time. See the pieces are very thick. And that's the way it normally comes when you buy it in the grocery. So I'm going to start out with the black pepper since I have it in my hand. And of course you season to taste. This is the smoked paprika that's going on now. Then I'm going to do the seasoning salt. Get it all over my meat. Then of course the rest of the roasted onion is going to go on the meat and my different types of pepper. Like I said, it's black pepper, a little bit of crushed red pepper, and some white pepper in here. The garlic powder. And a little bit more salt. And this is just your regular table salt. Of course, I use kosher. Okay. Now, I'm going to rub that into my meat. Okay. And as you can see, I've already cut my roasted, uh, my pep, I've already cut my potatoes for my scalloped potatoes and we'll be getting to that in a minute. Now we're going to take this back over to the stove and we're going to place it in a pot that we have already on the stove heating up and it has 
about a tablespoon of oil in it. So I'm going to place them in the pot. That's just a little piece of the fat. And I'm going to allow that to start to like pan fry and then when it browns on one side we're going to turn it on the other side and allow it to brown as well. As you can see my onions are already cooking up. And to the onions we're going to add some seasonings. Now I love with my scalloped potatoes I love onions and that's like a personal preference. You do need a little bit of onions just to help to flavor it but you don't need as many as I use. You can use maybe half of that to help flavor. Now on this side we're going to season the onions with a little bit of pepper and a little bit of chives and a little bit of roasted onion flakes. To that, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of butter. No more. Okay? And let that cook up. I want to add just a little bit of salt to this mixture. Turn my stove up just a little bit and grab the salt. Now, okay. Now, I have the written recipes for both of these because I know that, you know, it's kind of hard to follow when you're doing two things at one time. Now our onions, they're not brown yet, but as you can see they start to get soft. You can see the seasonings on them real well. I'm going to let it cook just a little bit more until it starts to sizzle up. See how the pan is starting to sizzle up? So I'm going to let it cook a little bit more because if you, the longer you cook these onions and as they caramelize, they begin to turn sweet. Okay. Now we're going to cook these scalloped potatoes on top of the stove. So a lot of people do cook them in the oven. Some people add cheese. But this is just a simple way to cook your scalloped potatoes with onions. Make them very, very tasty. And they'll still be delicious. Now, we're going to allow that to cook for a little while. And while we're here, you can see that the, the country style ribs are starting to kind of fry up nicely. You can see the smoke and you can see how it's frying up. So we're going to turn one. Hold on to the top. Kind of flip it. See that pretty brown? See that brown? That's what you're looking for. Could have allowed that to cook just a little bit longer. Now I don't like um, piercing my meat because to me piercing takes out the flavor of the meat and I like my meat to be real juicy and tender you know for me when I get ready to um, to bite into it or get ready to cut into it so we're going to allow this to cook just for a couple minutes on top of the stove now getting back to the onions as you can see the onions are sauteing up real nice now we're not going to get them down to caramelize Okay, this is good. Now, I'm going to pull my onions to the side and I'm going to add to that my potatoes. Now, my potatoes I've already cut and as you can see, I kind of cut them, some of them like this, and then I just cut them in half like that. So, I'm going to put that down into my pan, into the bottom of my pan kind of throw my onions on top of that. Okay. And I'm going to put the rest in there. Kind of flip it back. Okay, let me get rid of some of these. 
I just cook up. Now, we're going to allow this to cook just for a minute, and then I'm going to put the lid on it and allow it to cook for maybe 30, 35 minutes. Come back. These potatoes ought to be really good. Now, on this side of the stove, as you can see, this is cooking up quite well. And I'm not piercing the meat. Okay? I want it to kind of flip these two down in the center. Okay? Now, to this pot, I'm going to add one to two carrots. Again, that's a personal preference. You don't have to do that. You can allow it just to cook and to simmer like it is. But, I like carrots. You may like celery or another vegetable, so I'm going to add that. Now, once I've added that, I'm going to add one half cup of water. As you can see, it's starting to simmer up, so I'm going to take the pot top, put it on it. I'm going to put it into my oven. I'm going to cook it off at 375. Like I said, it's going to be for about an hour, hour and a half, good hour and a half that this will need to cook. And we'll get back to it. Now, before we go away from the stove, this has already started to cook. The potatoes are cooking up rather nicely. To add just a smidgen more salt because the potatoes will eat up the salt. Okay? And I'm going to add the remaining half a cup of water here. Cover this with a pot. Allow this to simmer about 30, 35, 40 okay, minutes. Now we'll our scalloped potatoes are ready. And here they are, the finished product. And we think, I think that um, the country style red should be just about ready as well so we're gonna take them out of the oven okay I'm gonna show you there it is now I want to show you something about this meat okay this is just juices this is not your oily oil. But look at how, you see that? When you can pull that meat away like that, see how I can pull it with the fork? Then that is some good tender meat. I'm going to plate up just a little bit for you. Take this piece. And you will put couple of these carrots down. And this color that you see, the gravy looking color, that's just from when we braise the meat on top of the stove and from the ca carrots, that's the orange looking color from that. Then we're going to put up, put some of these potatoes on the plate. I'll do that at home. See if we can move this back. Just to show you, that's the finished product. Okay, as always, this is just our um, country style ribs with some carrots and some scalloped potatoes. Again, as always, I want to thank you for viewing tonight. Remember, Chris cooks for you too.